next challenge is called DNA to RNA conversion. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, is the primary information storage molecule in biological systems. It is composed of four nucleic acid bases, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. Ribonucleic acid, RNA, is the primary messenger molecule in cells. RNA differs slightly from DNA in its chemical structure and contains no thymine. In RNA, thymine is replaced by another nucleic acid, uracil. Create a function which translates a given DNA string into RNA. For example, consider GCAT input, and it goes to GCAU, where the T got replaced by U because there's no T in RNA. The input string can be of arbitrary length. In particular, it may be empty. All input is guaranteed to be valid, i.e. each input string will only ever consist of these capital letters. Um, of course, I don't believe that. Um, you can run with that for this challenge, but it's not realistic for coding. So I'm going to pretend like I didn't read that very last note. But we can do this one way real quick if you don't care about any of that and you just want to solve the challenge. I assume you've paused already and had a chance. So we'll go to, you could do something like this, DNA replace, and we could say take T's and replace them with U's. And this probably covers it right on its own. Yep, we'll do the larger test. Yeah, so if you want to be done here, you can. I'm going to continue on this to protect against invalid input. I think that's more realistic. In the real world, you know, you don't get to just throw your hands up and say, um, you know, your logic doesn't work because someone, um, or it somehow got bad input. If you had a chance to capture it and handle it, instead of just returning strings and making it look like nothing's wrong, then that's pretty irresponsible in my opinion. So let's do some input checking. Let's make a collection. I'm going to use an array because it's a fixed size. And while I'm not a doctor or scientist, I'm guessing that these GCAT values don't change. You know, I don't think someone's gonna come to me in a week and say, hey, there's a new letter you know, whatever, R, and it means this. So it's probably just those four, and it's probably going to stay those four. So I'll make a character array to hold those, and I can call those uh, DNA letters. And we'll make a new character array. We're going to size it four, right, because there are four of them. And then I'm going to initialize the values with the ones they provided. So it was G, C, A, T. And so I'm going to be doing some extra work here. Essentially, I'm going to be going over the string multiple times and passes, which is unfortunate, but it's the cost I'm paying to have some input validation and make sure if I get a string in that has X's and Z's and stuff, clearly something went off the rails and I want to halt things and just say, hey, uh, you can't be serious with this input right now. We need to figure out how we got here. So we've got the valid characters there. Another thing I'm going to do, which probably isn't necessary for this challenge with their tests, but I'm gonna have an uppercase version of this, uppercase DNA, which is just DNA to upper, we've used to upper before, convert all characters in the string to uppercase in case they aren't already. So that would be handy. Then we can compare against these values, which are already uppercase. So we have our valid letters. We have the input converted to uppercase. So now let's check if any of the input characters are not part of that collection. And hopefully that uh, jars your memory a little bit. We've done something like this in the past. We're going to use uppercase DNA. We're going to work on that for the rest of this problem because it's in the form that we like. And with that, we have this many 
any. Remember we've, we've used any or all before in it. You pass it a predicate and it can tell you if any element in that collection satisfies the condition that you pass it. So a predicate is just something that returns a boolean. It's true or false. In our case, what are we looking for that's true or false? We're looking for if any one of these characters in this uppercase DNA string are not within this collection. So let's do that. I often use um, ch for char. We could say, say letter. That's a good one too. Um, if letter, that's our parameter name, right? And we could say DNA letters. We've used contains, just tells us if the letter is in the set, this array set now. It's in this array. And we'll see if it contains the letter that we're examining. Remember, it's going to check each letter one at a time. And of course, we want to say if it's not contained in there, that represents the bad condition. If we get any, kind of read it like English, right? If the uppercase form, if there are any letters that are not contained in this registered set of letters, then we have a problem, right? So in that case, I'll just throw new argument exception. And you know what, we should probably start bringing in the libraries that we're using before we get in trouble. Using system for exceptions. Um, I'm using some link stuff here, so let's do that. System link. Think we're good. We'll find out. And so yeah, at this point, I've checked through all of the input. If there were any invalid characters and exceptions thrown in, we will never get here. So at this point, uh, we know we're we've got valid input. So uh, the only thing I would change here is to use the uppercase version. This will be dealing with uppercase letters and we'll return it. And then whatever's returned will be uppercase too. So I'll go ahead and test this. First test passes. Second test looks good, cool, yeah. So maybe you thought this was overkill, but this is what I think is a more realistic solution. Not the one-liner that we started with, but uh, more robust, I would say. I'll go ahead and submit this one, collect those points, check out what other people are doing. And yeah, they did the same thing that we did at first. That was an extremely popular way of doing it. Same kind of thing. These guys used a for loop to do it. It's good practice if you want to practice your looping. So yeah, there you have it. Hit me up with those questions, comments, solutions. Otherwise, we'll keep rolling. Thanks for watching.